Welcome to another episode in the uh, Open Source Contribution Series. Um, this will be another episode, the third episode on the bulletin uh, utility that I'm working on. Um, I plan on using uh, on doing two episodes on this utility, but the last episode I ran into a lot of issues um, and just some stuff that I couldn't figure out at the time. And so, uh, so we're doing a third one uh, and I'm pretty confident that we can wrap it up in this episode. Um, so yeah, so I, I always watch my, my own videos uh, back just to see how I can improve the, the video itself, uh, just in general, uh, the recording quality, uh, audio, stuff like that. Um, but in this case, I also noticed some things that I just missed while, while, working, on the, while working on the utility. Uh, some errors that I didn't read correctly, uh, some documentation that I didn't read correctly. And so that's where a lot of the source for a lot of confusion in the last episode. Um, so I'm pretty sure that we can <clears throat> pretty quickly go to a state where everything works expected. Um, and then after that, I want to um, add some tests, uh, simplify things a little bit, uh, extract some code into separate functions that are more easily testable. Um, and so then we can wrap this up. So if you, you haven't watched the first or the second episode yet, uh, you can do that on my channel. There is a, a, a separate open source contributions um, uh, playlist that you can follow where all of these videos end up. Uh, so go check it out if you haven't, uh, but if you have, let's dive in and let's uh, let's get this done. So first of all, <clears throat> let's take a look at the the way that the template looked, the render template looked last time at the end of the second video. So there were some issues. So first of all, we were missing a, a tile here or a post. Um, there was no data in here. And those are the two main issues right now with the template itself. There were some other issues <clears throat> in the code that we'll get to, but these are the two main issues that we have in the template. So uh, let's, let's dive into the code. So if we go to the template, there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, um, after reading the documentation of Terra again, I noticed that actually the index function is uh, uh, one based um, index. So it starts at one, then two, three, four. Uh, there's also a zero based index, which start, actually starts at zero. Now we, we obviously want the zero based index because we check if the, the, the index of the current uh, loop is even. And if it is, we add the opening bracket for the, um, for the row in the table. Now, the reason why I didn't catch this in the video <coughs> or in the last episode is because my browser helpfully added the opening TR uh, in the table. Um, whereas if you actually look at the raw output of the code, it is actually missing there. So, um, well, let's let's just quickly, if we go back to main, let's see. So we, so this is still, the code is still the same as last time. The only difference is I added a small stop for where we're going to add our test. Um, this is just default that you also get when you create a new uh, library project. Um, I added it here for now and we'll work with that later. But for now, let's just, um, let's see. So we're going to, um, let's see. Um, we're going to comment this out. Is there anything else? No, and we're going to, Use the body again, and uh, is it still working? I think I'm missing a. Oh right. <clears throat> so this should still work, okay. And now let's see. So we can do another curl. Um, well, actually no. We want to do a run, and we'll pipe the output to test.html. Uh, again, the token doesn't matter because we're using the raw data locally now. Uh, that is, I'm assuming we still have the data locally, but we'll see. So if we run this, and if we now go to <coughs> test.html, you can actually see here that the TR is missing here. So for the first, um, so the first one, so because it's one index, it, 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 on, it only adds one to the first row and then it adds the closing uh, TR tag and it, it adds the opening one because then it actually works. So that's why the first one only showed one. Uh, so what we need to do instead is if we go to the template, we will add a, a zero 
<coughs> index zero is, is a function that's available, which will actually make it a zero based index. So if you now go to test.html, here we can see it actually added a TR right now. So that's, so that's solved. And even if we now go, so now we can see, well, actually it's not as solved as we would like. So basic, so we do still have a, an issue right now. <clears throat> Let's see what the issue is. So we've got a TR here and we've got a TR closed here right away. And so we constantly are constantly opening and closing TR. Um, if loop index zero is even. Now zero is even, one is not even, so it shouldn't add a TR. Uh, <clears throat> is it adding? Let's make sure I'm reading correctly again. So we are adding a TR, then a TD. Then we are closing TR, <coughs> opening TD again, closing TD, opening TR. Wait, we're closing TR, but we're not opening it again. And then we are opening TR, closing it, Did I do something wrong here? So we've got the, oh, right. So we also obviously also need to do an index zero here, right? So now, right. So now we've got the correct, um, the correct template layout. Now the next part is that we were missing the actual values in these fields here. And so again, if I had actually spent some time looking at the code instead of worrying of there being an issue and perhaps boring you all with uh, with me figuring this out, we can see that there is actually, the tag was actually missing here. And what confused me a bit was that the date was actually shown. So I didn't really, it didn't really register right away. Like, oh, maybe I just not entering the data. Uh, but obviously the data is not part of a tag. It's just the, it's the time in the post. So even though it's in the same place, it's, it's come from a different location. So now we can actually see the data. Now we do still <clears throat> we do still want to split um, to remove this as column part. So um, so we could get all uh, we could do it here. For example, we could make tags uh, a hash map uh, and the key representing the type of the tag and the value representing the value, uh, which would be, which would be okay. Uh, we could also do it in the, in the template itself here, which is maybe not as nice. So maybe we will actually go for the hash map, um, which would mean that we would actually go from a, we would have to do a couple of things here. First, uh, we would, make this into a hash map. Now uh, we do need to add a uh, standard collection hash map. Um, and then let's see. Um, and the hash map would basically be <coughs> uh, a key value of strings. And once we do that, so this would actually become a hash map as well. And now, so, so we map it to a, to a string. And now we'll probably have to do another map and we'll say we, we get a string in here and we'll do, let's see. So we'll do, we need to, We need to split the string. Right. So we would get back <coughs> a vector of strings in that case. So we would say, well, let's, let's check it again.
Yeah. So we would say string dot split, and we'd split on the colon, and <clears throat> this would give us back a. Um, A vector of, of strings, zero or more uh, elements in the vector. And so then the next part would be, so we actually have to convert the vector to a hash map. <clears throat> now we could actually do this here. And perhaps it makes sense to do it here. Um, so let's see, so uh, we'll add, we'll say the, um, the values, well, let's, the values is <coughs> split. And then if, um, Actually, I'm thinking we might want to split it first and then filter based on <clears throat> if it's well, if it's not equal to two, the length of the vector, we we simply don't want the values because they are not interesting to us. <clears throat> so what we could do is um, let's move this back into a map. <clears throat> And then we'll add a uh, filter. Let's see, filter. Um, <clears throat> so the filter is just <clears throat> right. So it just gives us a, a true or false. And so here we get a, <clears throat> a vector back. And we would say uh, we would need the length of a vector. Again, what is the length of the vector? Size, I guess. No, len, right. So we would say uh, uh, v.len equals two. And so this would only give us uh, a vector with two values in it. And then after that, we would <coughs> do another map we would still get the vector back and here we would actually say um hash map oh actually let's see so we'd have to can we go from a let's see I wonder, can we go from a vector to a hash map straight away? If we have two values in the vector. <clears throat> but let's just for now, let's, so we would, if we were to do this, <clears throat> we would have to initialize the, um, uh, the values <clears throat> is a hash map new. This would have to be mutable. And so, um, so after that, we would, we would say we have the map and we want to, from this vector, we want to go uh, hash ma um, values dot insert, I guess. And we would say value zero and value one. <clears throat> and then we collect the data. Expected semi, where do we need a semi? I'm probably missing some columns or something. Let's see, this one's correct. We split the white space, we do a map. We do another map to split this. Then we do a filter. Finally, we do another map. Uh, <clears throat> wait, so the maps actually return values. 
the filter does as well so it has to return true or false let's see cargo check if it's a bit more clear here oh wait did i oh right all right so let's see but we're still <clears throat> oh i'm clearly missing a period here all right so now that we have this let's do a check okay so let's see no matter land found for uh actually so we still have a <clears throat> we map this we split the string so this sh it's calling len on for type string split Let's see so split uh, split returns a oh it returns an it returns an iterator right <clears throat> do we need to collect it first or can we see i would expect since we have an iterator here we could filter over that iterator straight away although well what if we actually provide the type here so we would say would this be a vec of string So we get a, a split <clears throat> back. Mm, and why can't we straight away? Actually, right. So we right. Uh, so this is an iterator in an iterator. So we would have to collect this. <clears throat> then we would get. <clears throat> sorry. Then we would get back. Um, right, so we collected this and now this should be a fec of s string, I guess. Mm, no. Type mismatch. Again, let's just read the split. <clears throat> so we have a string. We split it and we get a vector back. A vector of stars. So this gives us the string. I even wonder if we could not do this here, but do this later so that we don't have to go from a string. <clears throat> right. So we should be able to not do this here, although this is not <clears throat> this is not the issue right now. <clears throat> but what is the issue? So, um, so it says we need some type annotation here. A type parameter. Type must be known at this point. 
right but so if we collect after we <coughs> split the string and then we collect it we would get back a vector of strings right Although I'm not quite sure if we can still iterate over it at that point. Yeah, we should. It's still an iterator of... No, we should. It's still an iterator in which the values are actually vectors of strings, of stirs. And so we filter that iterator. <coughs> and we would still get a vec of stirs. But something is off here. And what is it telling me? Expected signature of Fn. <clears throat> Why is that? Um, let's see. So if we do a, a closure type annotation, let's see. Let's see. So we um, well, we want inside the closure. We want type annotation of the of the values that we capture. Which is not what this is about. So closure argument. Yeah, so this is so this is how you provide the type itself. And that's actually what I'm doing here. So why why is this one failing then? Now obviously. So we still have an iterator and we can filter here. Let's make sure that we're doing this correctly. We still get an iterator back. Using closure determined if an element should be yielded. Closure must return true or false, which is what we're doing. True returns element, it's false, we'll try again. Mm hmm So this gives a reference to <coughs> self item. Mm. Wait a second. Can iterate on both filters and maps. So return an option T, okay. So that obviously makes more sense. So we would just <coughs> wrap it into an okay then, I guess. Although, let's one more time. So it is actually the filter um, the argument that you give in is actually an fn mute. So that's why we need the type argument there. All right, that's why it's complaining about the type argument that we're giving because it ex expects actually the fn. Which is interesting. So in in this in these cases here it can infer the type so you don't have to provide it. In our case, because we're mapping here and doing a collect, um, it 
doesn't know the type yet at that point. Right. So it needs we need somehow. Mm -hmm. This is not what we want. Let's do a Google search here. Rust filter type. Let's see if we can find an example here. Think value of the type. Hmm. So it it would be would it be a uh, is that a problem? Right. So that's a problem, right? It's taking a reference to a fact instead of the fact itself. And so let's just one more time. Um so the predicate <clears throat> is the return value. Okay, so I'm not quite sure why, why it, what means that it says fn mute here, and we can just pass in a reference to vec as the type, uh, but. I'll figure that out later. So let's see. So now it's what is it complaining about? Cannot be built from right because we are we removed this one and now we also need to move. Uh, we need to move this one. Let's see to here. Uh, well, not exactly. We actually need to. For these, we will do uh, to owned. Owned. What is it complaining about? Why do we get an option back? Collection of hash map string string cannot be built from standard iter iterator. Item is standard option. Why are we getting an option back here? <clears throat> well, I do think I'm going to actually move this back up here and then make this into a actual string like this. And then we can also remove the two owned here. It does not work. Let's see. Let's do a delete for this, delete for that. Cannot be built from iterator stir. Um, so we do have strings here actually. And I'm confused why it would. So this is, uh, this would be a string, but I guess it's not needed. From iterator is not implemented for vec string, but I am actually, I converted here from a store to a string. So I so I would expect here to um, uh, 
Let's see one more time. Right, so I guess it's dereferencing back to stir if I call split. Let's see. Um iterate over substrings of right over substrings of this string slice. Pattern can be stirred car right. I could always add a term as a split. So it is actually returning a stir instead of a string here, um, which is interesting. I would say, uh, let's see, I would actually expect to be able to just split the string and get, obviously it's, it's less, um, less efficient since you would be, um, storing those strings on the heap, but still. I'm not quite sure why I'm not able to then um, split off. Mm, right. Right, so this is actually what is. Well, actually, no, this is not really what I want. So I'm, I'm not quite sure why it doesn't provide a uh, split and gives me back two strings. I guess it's just since I can also use stir for this and it's more efficient, uh, there's just no split for uh, uh, and getting back strings. I could just move them to, to own strings again, obviously, which is what we did before. So let's see. So we want to own and this will, uh, let's see. This will give us back, and so then we still we're still with, uh, dealing with this part here. So we do want to <clears throat> so we do have own strings here, and when we collect this, can we build from iterator item is option string? We're returning results, so we're in, inside the okay here, that's fine. Now the iterator is yielding, oh, uh, wait. We're actually, we're inserting, we're mapping here, but we're inserting um, values into the, it, into the, into the hash map. But we're not actually, uh, returning the hash map. So this actually shouldn't be in the um, right. So what we need to do is we need to, oh, we actually don't need to collect here. So, so we want this to be um, like this. This should be each or is it for each? it's for each right so we so this will actually already um uh, this isn't the for each is not lazy so it will actually execute the iterator so now we would actually uh, so we can remove the collect and then here we want to return values and I'm probably still missing something Take some parameter two parameters what's supplied. Where is my mistake? Right, so okay, so we do need to not return this and then finally 
All right, and so we also need to not return anything here. Uh, let's see. I'm still missing something. Actually, I am because this is this is the insert, and this is the for each. Insert. Expect it. Am I miscounting my brackets now? Let's just make sure that I'm actually. Yeah, this is correct. So you give a, a key and a value. And that's what we're doing here. <clears throat> and so let's also make sure that for each, using it correctly. What is for each? It doesn't return anything, right? Although, and I'm, but I'm, uh, Does this actually, does this return? Yeah, it returns an option. Okay, but we want to ignore the option because we're not doing anything with it. Um, so we are actually, we are ignoring it here. Do we actually need to return explicitly? We don't, right? Although I think, uh, I think what's happening here is we need to, we need to wrap this into uh, into a block. At least that's what I think is happening. We'll see. Um, also, we need one of these and this one and this one. Oh, uh, another one. Incorrect closed limiter. I must be going blind here. We open up, open this, we do an insert. Oh, wait, the insert needs to be in here. And then we need to make sure we return anything here. Right. Finally. Um, so let's see. Okay, so now it's working. Um, and so we get back, uh, at least we should get back the hash map with the string keys and the string values. Uh, let's see. And so now we can do this. I s I'm assuming it will fill because it's not a Right. Try to iterate using key value on variable post text, but it's missing key. Exactly. So now we need to go to the uh, template. And we are going to, um, I'm not sure how, like, is it maybe key value? And so here we, so let's just test this out first. Well, it's not erroring out and anymore, so that's fine. And so here we can say um, if key equals s instead of this one, l if key equal uh, for type and same here with the alpha language uh, like this so this is fine and then the uh, this will become the value let's see and let's 
let's see how this looks. Okay, so now we actually have the um, the tags there without the uh, the prefix, so that's nice. Um, now there was one more actually. Now that I remember, there was one more issue, and that's this one. So we the language one is not added to the CSS yet. So let's that's a quick fix. So let's go to let's see where did I add this. Like this. So this will be language. And let's make sure it works. All right. So this is fine now. Now, let's see. Let's go back to uh, main.rs. So the next part is <coughs> the next part is uh, splitting up some of this stuff. And actually, one of the things that I that I also realized in the last video is that um, um, when we were uh, when I was struggling with the uh, with the context and Terra. The issue, and the error actually mentions this, and if you think about it, it makes sense. The issue is actually that we were uh, we were using a vec of post um, instead of a, a key value type, so, for example, a hash map, um, or uh, a post uh, a post itself, which in which case the keys are the actual fields in the in the struct. And the reason why you need this is it's quite obvious is that the in the template you need to be able to um, mention the so the names of the keys are the actual uh, variables that you the top level variables that you can access in the template so if you have a vec of post and there is no there is no name for that you can't reference that in any way uh, the, the, the closest you could get is to have a zero for post zero but that doesn't make any sense so so the, so that was the issue that we had so if you were to um, and that's why it's working now because we're actually in the context we're we setting the variable post and the, and that contains the actual vec of post and so now we can in our template we can uh, we can access post and it works as expected um so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to um so my idea was um to do something like make another struct and make it um Let's call it uh, data for now. Terrible generic name, but let's stick with it for now. And this will have post, which will be a vec of post. And so, um, and so what we can do now is we can we can use this data to deserialize this as expected. So we can, for example, we can say. Uh, let's see. Um, so we would say uh, let data equals we would have to implement default for this. Actually, I'm wondering if this is the if this is the nice the nicest solution that we can think of, because now we would still need to do, um, because we can just serialize Not even this. No, this is not going to work, obviously. Um, so, what would be the what would be the most the cleanest way to do it is actually because now we actually we do have we have this data struct, but when we deserialize the actual data itself, we aren't actually getting back the. So we would we would have to say somehow that this is the top level um, uh, object in which the data returned by pinboard would, would have to be inserted. And so I'm not quite sure if there is a way to do that. Something with root or... See if there's a search here. Oh, I think so. 
Let's see, can we somehow do something with the root, the root object? Because, exactly, this is basically what we want. So how can we get this? Mm. Yeah, okay. I don't think we're going to actually do this. We could use this uh, crate or we could implement our own uh, macro to do this, but that seems a bit overkill for now. So we'll just stick with the effect of post, which is fine, it works. And there's not really a reason not to do it. Um, the only thing is it would be nice. Um, let's see. Well, no, let's leave it as is. So let's let's start extracting some things. So first of all, um, let's start um, by creating a new function, and we'll call it um, what would be the best name? Deserialize. Pose. And we would get a, um, I guess, a string, and we would give back a fact of pose, potentially with an error if something happens. We'll see. Uh, and so we would move this part. Well, actually, do we want the. I think we can just, instead of doing deserialize separately, since it's not really that interesting, we'll instead do a render, render template. Well, let's just call it render for now. And again, we, uh, in this case, in this case, we want to do something with result. Uh, if it renders, well, actually, let's, let's give back the, the string, I guess. So that we can render it and actually the error will also just be a string and so in that case we can <clears throat> and i wonder so we'll take a uh, pose will be a fact of pose and so we'll move this into our rendering function and so we have the post here and this this all stays the same except that we if it's okay we will return the string and if it's an error so instead of doing all of this we will just say if it's an error we will i don't know if this is possible let's see what we can do with this Don't expect this to work. Uh, the template, All right? So we also need to, we also need to know the template. So we'll say template is and what is the actual template here? Um, just make it like this, and it should tell us in the error now. Uh, wait. So this will just be a uh, I don't know. I32, and now it should complain that it's expecting something else here. Actually, it's complaining about wrong number of tiger. All right, yeah, sure. So perhaps we can even, I'm not sure if it's, if the error will be converted to a string automatically, but we could see if we can just um, do it like this. Oh, wait, are we still importing the result? Right, we are. So where are we actually using this? We aren't anywhere. So let's remove this. And then we can also... Uh, 
go back to using regular result. And so this is now, all right, so it, it, it is returning an error. But what I would like to do is to convert that error into a string. And I'm wondering, because we have the, we have the Terra, let's see, where is the Terra? Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> um, is this the crate I'm using? Oh, single R. Terra, right? <coughs> and so we get an error back from this result. And it implements from string. So does that mean performs conversion? I'm not quite sure if it actually performs it, if it's actually possible what I'm trying to do here. Let's go back to the match for a second. Oh, let's keep, keep this as this and let's say match Terra. And we'll go from an OK um, string to a. This probably can be a bit nicer, but we'll leave it like this for now. Something like this. Is this possible? Expected string. All right, so the template is just a stir actually. So we'll can, we can do a stir and we can remove this part. So this should work now. And we want to go. So I guess we would have to do format. Is it format error? like this both types All right so this would also be a, a uh, let's see All right, functions never use render, that's correct. Um, so here we're going to say, match uh, render body and uh, pose. And now, Okay, string will end up as uh, so basically we will do a uh, print basically what we did before print the len for the string and otherwise we'll do and this will be um, rendering field could just print the error itself. All right. So this should still work, I think, unless I forgot something, but I don't think so. Let's see. Well, this doesn't look the way we want it to look. So what is what happened? Um, this is not the one I want. It is the one I get. So apparently, I'm re I'm re printing the wrong data right now. Let's go back to main. What am I printing? Am I returning the right data? 
I would say so, yes. If it's okay. I feel like I'm making a mistake here. So we've got the post, we're adding it to the context. Then we're doing a terror one off with the template, which is a, which is the string. Am I is it oh wait. Um, oh, it is correct. Wait, I'm doing a body and a txt. No, it's not correct. We need the. Is it just a template? Yes, we need it. We just need template here. All right. So now, if we do this. Should get the data all right so this works and so um what we can now actually do we can actually test the rendering so we could say uh, test render and we would let's see so we would say let template equals um we could do a post zero dot um, I don't know, href, and we would, we would say let body equals, um, or actually post equals fact of post. Now we do need to fill in all the details. Uh, would be nice if we had a default we could make a default for this but let's stick with this for now uh, so href will be one title will be two um what else do we have the description three and we're missing some stuff we've got the time the tags i guess right which would be another fact. No, is that hash map default? You have undeclared type. Wait, so we need to do um, use super so that we're able to use everything that we imported in the main module. Mismatch type. Right, so this wouldn't all have to be too owned. All of this would be nicer if we had a um, um, uh, if we had a default, which we don't right now. We could do that, but let's let's. We're already quite long, actually. I'm going to uh, going to wrap this up. Uh, there's only a couple of things we need to do. So we're not using template here, so we just want to test test this. Um, I'm just going to go a bit longer, maybe half an hour more, um, since we got stuck for a bit there with the uh, with the iterator. So now that we have this data, we can actually call uh, let result is render, and then we pass in the template and the pose. And finally, we should be um, assert that the result is okay, I guess, or something. So I'm not sure if this is if it's okay or okay. And then also we want to assert that result um, unwrap it. Um, and so we're getting back a, a string and it has to equal um, not this, it has to equal one because the, the href is one and that's what we are actually returning. Uh, 
uh, right, this needs to be a sort equal. Okay, and let's do a cargo uh, cargo test to see if this works. Okay, so we have a first test that is testing that rendering works as expected. So let's add one more. Um, so we're so uh, let's do the request stuff in another function as well. So we'll do a um, let's see. So I'm thinking we might actually still do the we could actually still do struct data. Let's let's do this again. And so we'll say post is a vec of post. And we'll um, well we actually don't need to deserialize this or serialize it. So but we do want private debug and let's while we're at it um, Let's do default as well, and we should, I guess, be able to do a default here as well. Um, no, we do want this. And so, now that we have a default, we can also clean up the, the test below, but let's wait with that. Um, and so what we need to do here now is we need to say we'll do a uh, data equals data.default. And then the body is is this, and we can actually say data is data body um, post, and we'll also actually so we get the body, then we get the post, and then here we'll say data equals data post. And that way we can also actually um, pass in the data here instead of the post itself. In case we want to do uh, more than just uh, the facts. And so this would become a data struct. And then we can actually one off uh, value. Now I'm now we, if I'm correct, we can actually do move data in here, probably a, uh, a reference to data, which would allow us to remove this part. Rebound. All right, so we need we we do need to implement uh, serialize for this one because we are actually. see right so this is now failing obviously because we are we do need some some different data here so we've got the template now let's do a um, post equals um, post default we'll make this mutable and we'll um, say post well, actually, this is a single post. Post dot um, href equals example. Let's call it foo. And finally, we would say, um, let's see, so this is. Um, let's see. We've got posts here. We'll get the first post and set the href. Um, then, so we can actually remove this. Now we do need to set the data. So we'll do data equals data posts. And we'll pass in the data here. What are we still missing? And this needs to be two owned. And so now we should have the exact same outcome as we did before, except that we now encapsulated it 
inside an object obviously we need to uh, check for foo here all right so with that out of the way so now we're actually using the one off value and we are so this can be gone and we are using the uh, the top level data object and so the next part so why is this complaining single character string uh, cargo uh, clippy All ah, right, we don't need to pass in a string here. We can just use a, a car like this. All right, that makes sense. Uh, should be one character long. Oh, pretty sure it is one character long. Pretty sure it's just not compiling correctly. Yeah, all right, so this, we can ignore this. Um, and so the next step would be, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to move out the function, but what we can actually do now is we can, we can implement a function on our data object. So we could say, um, for example, uh, if we were to say here, impl data, and we could have a function saying, And we could actually implement the from trade here. So let's see uh, for a good example of this. Impl from for CLI error, right. And so we could just do it like this. And so <clears throat> we want to go from a Let's see. Well, actually, I don't want to implement uh, the from trade here because I want to, I just want to say from pinboard or something like that, pass in the, uh, the pinboard API key and then get the data back. So yeah, so let's go back to just, so we'll say from pinboard and we'll say the token is a stir and we'll give back a, uh, well, we'll give back self. Not sure what happened there. And so, so now with this from pin board, <clears throat> we don't take self, so we can initialize the data, uh, a data object from here. And so when we have the token, so now we can actually like take all of this and so let's take so, we, so also we want to check the status so we do want to we actually so this can actually um this can return an error so we do need to result self or a string and if it's a string we'll just um We'll just return the string as an error to the, to the client. And so this can now become token, uh, all right. So this is the token. And so this return value will have to change. So this will either be self or it will be a, a string representing the error. So if it's not a, um, if it's not success, we will return, right? So we'll just say, um, return this to owned. And actually this will have to become an error. Why is this not working? Right, and so if it is, we need to return okay data and now I'm thinking we can actually um, see so we're just actually we are 
and we need to change this as well. So here we actually, we still don't have the objects themselves. We still need to create the objects. So that's what we're doing here. So we'll also create a from stir later on. So that, that's the one that we can actually test. Um, but in this case, this is the thing that we want. And so let's see. So if we get data back, then we'll create posts, which we'll do by um, deserializing the body. And then we will return. Right, so this can be OK. Like this. All right. And so now here we can actually. Um, we can say data from pinboard and we will pass in the opt pinboard API token and this is the actual data that we have now like this and so let's see expected stir find string all right so let's make it a string why is this not working of course so this so if this returns a uh, so again we need some so in the main function is where we will actually do we'll only do we get some data we check the result uh and we error out if anything happens and so uh, so we'll do a match here again and we'll say um if it's okay what is it that we get back? We get the data back, so we'll return data. And if it's an error, now we're doing quite a lot of, we're doing the same over and over again here. So we, we could, um, could factor that out, but it's fine for now. And so with this, we should, we should have, we should still have the same result as we had before. So the test should still pass and still compiling. And if we were to now, if we run this, we will actually use the actual pinboard API again. So, um, but that's uh, fine. Although we do need to correct API key since I obviously changed it again. So let's do that. And let's render this and see if it's still working as expected. It is, so that's looking good. Uh, we do have an empty one here, uh, which is simply because it's, uh, um, because we don't have an even number of, of items. We could somehow not show it, but I think it's fine for now. Um, we don't need to worry about that. So we do a data from the from pinboard and now we could do the same. We could do a test. So obviously, if you wanted to test this, we would um, uh, let's see, we would we would uh, either stub out uh, the, the, the client itself. We would potentially pass in the client here or something so we can enter. A, uh, we can pass in a stub client if we're testing it, um, but we're fine with this for now. Uh, obviously, we do need to change this. And so actually we can make some changes here as well. First of all, <clears throat> it would actually be nice if we could just return, uh, use the question mark to return an error if it happens. So we don't need to do this okay error checking. Um, but the other thing is that we can actually use, so yeah, so perhaps, perhaps we'll actually do this. Now we would get, we would return an, not a string, but something else. Um, let's see. This is the query, this is sent. Or sent. Right, so we don't need match anymore. So now we're just assigning it. And obviously, what are we returning? We return a request error. Right. So 
So we'll do this for now. And uh, was it errors private? Is it just request error? It's probably exported. Yes. And so this note, so this actually also needs to be a request error now, which is not not great. So I guess we could use a um, the error thing. The working with errors is not something I'm too familiar with yet, but you can use a box to encapsulate the error. Um, but I'm thinking, do I want to do that now? I think we're going to leave it. Hmm. Let's see. Mm, let's just do a quick search on how to do that Rust box error. Boxing errors. So yeah, so we do have a, a box of the error trait. And so then we can just return this, but how, how would we use this actually? Right, so we can actually just still print the error. Okay, because all the er the error trade actually implements, I guess, the display trade or something, right? And so we can just do a generic. Uh, we can return a generic error here. It's not a generic, but it's a it's an error object that lives on the heap instead of the stack. So. So if we were to do something like this, now, but now we actually, I'm wondering, now we do need to, is this the standard error? Let's make sure, yeah. Now I wonder, this this will still work, yes. Um, and this, we actually need to box. So we would say box new. If I'm not mistaken, <coughs> uh, no, the other way around. So we say box new. Like this, right? Right, the, tra the trade error is not. Um, so how could we just return the actual string as an error? Rus return box string error. How to manual return. Right, so do we have to implement? Yeah. That seems a bit, and there's the failure crate, which I know is, I haven't used it yet, but which is actually used to make this a lot easier, which would help us here, I think. see dot into can we actually make it into an error then does this work does that work type an intention needed we don't actually need to box it ourselves so if we call into it will actually convert it into a box error so that's that's pretty nice. Okay, so then this um, this works. Now obviously down here. Well, no, we we don't we don't actually don't need to change anything here because we are just printing it, and that's possible with errors. So that's pretty sweet actually. Um, so let's see if this works. Do 
Did we still get the data? We did. All right, nice. So we are going to wrap this up now. Um, there's one more thing we could we could do. Doesn't make sense. Oh, well, let's see. So the template part, uh, we don't actually need to move this into a, into a separate function. It's pretty pretty small, pretty clear. So we're doing uh, some error checking here. We're doing some error checking here. We can remove this part, and we're doing some error checking here as well. Um, let's see. We have some tests only for the rendering right now. Uh, we could still improve it. But I think it's fine for now. And there's one more thing that we could do actually. And I think, let's see. I believe, let's quickly check the request documentation because I think we can just call JSON on the response to go to, to use Serda to go to the JSON object. Now, this method in fill whenever response body is not in JSON format or cannot be properly serialized, right? So we would get an error back. I'm not quite sure which error would we get back. All right, so they, there's probably a... Um, where is the error kind again? Oh, no, that, was, that wasn't the Terra crate. So I guess, yeah, so it's serialization. So it so it has its, it has an error for when serialization uh, fails. So we, we also get an error back. So we can just, instead, we, we can just say JSON. And that would actually, so I'm guessing we could remove all this. And we could say pose, which is a vec of pose. I would pass it in right away. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Let's see. I think it's wrong actually. No, it's correct. Okay, and so we would still, if we were to do this, it should still work as expected. Hmm, invalid type string. Expected a bow string. That's interesting. Why is this happening? Type, invalid type string. Why did the old implementation work and the new one doesn't? Invalid type string rocket expected a board string. Is there anything in here that explains? So they are owned strings and that's also what we expect here. It's also what we return in our hash map here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Pass in the token. It's definitely let's 
let's see, can we, what does it actually do? So it's just in from reader, so it reads from, So I'm guessing because it's using from reader here, we get a different outcome here. I'm not quite sure why. <clears throat> I probably forgot some stuff, right? So we don't want this. All right. Well, we'll leave, we'll leave it as is as is, as is for now, uh, and I might look at this later when I commit all this, all the things. So contact. We're no longer using context. That's correct. Um, so yeah. So we're going to leave it at this. I think we have a uh, we have a, we have a test, uh, not a very ex extensive test, but it's fine for now. We have the render function. Uh, we're actually calling the render. So the main the main uh, function has been cleaned up a bit. Um, now there's one more thing that we didn't do and uh, that's we didn't actually implement the uh, the option of passing in the tags yourself so now the the tags are actually hard coded to rocket md game loop so yeah so let's let's just quickly do that because we uh, obviously without it this uh, utility would be quite useless so we'll say um, uh, filter, I guess. Or we'll just make it a string. Um, and so you would just pass in this the filter. Um, yeah. And so here we would say filter is stir. And this would become filter and then uh, tags to uh, filter pinboard post based on comma separated tags. Yep. And so we pass in the filter there and then we still need to actually pass in the filter. So here we will say uh, opt.filter. And I guess if we don't pass any, it, it would just return all the tags. We, we can actually validate that. So one thing that I'm, uh, I would like to make this optional because I suspect if we do it now, it will actually fail because we need to pass in the filter. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. So let's quickly go to um, docsr as doc opt. It was various docs. No, it was struct opt. So we want some kind of optional. Oh, obviously, yeah, makes total sense. So if you actually make this an option, let's see. Like this. Now we have an option here. Um, and now obviously we do need to, so we will pass in the, uh, so this is no longer a, this and in the function itself we will now accept a let's see can we actually do an option of stir and for now we could say um, we want to if we if we have none then we want to map it
No, it's not what you want. Or return the option if, the val if it contains a value, otherwise return of B. Right. So we'll say uh, or, and we'll just do an empty string for now, I think, yes. Wait. Does it, ret oh, it returns an option. Well, I, I actually want to unwrap. Let's see. That's I don't know what it, what its name, but what I want is I want a value, and if there's no value, then I want some kind of default. So maybe it's called default, I guess. Let's see. Not expect. Unwrap will panic. That's not what we want. Unwrap or that's what we want, I guess. Yes. All right. So we'll say unwrap or. And now we will actually have the value itself. So let's see if this is still working. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm not quite sure how we would do this because I it doesn't really matter in this case because we're, we're moving the value anyway. Um, but I would like to be able to. And then, yeah, and then I would need to to owned and um, no not to owned I would have to take a reference to it uh, this is definitely not uh, not the way to do it but this should work at least use an use of unwrap or followed by a function call yeah I think we need to use unwrap or else so that the uh, and it takes a closure i think that's it is that correct yeah and so the reason being uh wait a second so actually why does this feel now? Interesting. Why does the the query that we pass in have an effect on the have an effect on the outcome that we get back? So this is the same as what we had with the JSON. And where is it? It's panicking here, I guess. Or actually it's panicking here, probably here. So I'm not quite sure why it would, why the output of the response would differ based on what we are passing into the query at least that's what i'm that's what i'm getting from this right now invalid type string expected bow string ah uh, wait we are actually Could it be because we are now getting something? No. Well, let's see. So if you pass in a filter and we say rocket and the game loop, what did we now get back? Um, Right. 
right. So it, it has to be, I guess it has to do with escaping. Which is interesting. And so, so we do have this uh, API limit. So I'm, I suspect if I do it again now, it would, if I get all of Rocket, it would actually fail now. Unless there isn't an API limit. Uh, so far there doesn't seem to be any, which is interesting. So is this now, yeah, so now, so this is much bigger now. So now we actually have the, all of the uh, posts that I, that I tagged or that I pinned in my pinboard account based, uh, related to the Rusty Rockets project. And so the one that was failing was actually, um, was actually a private one. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, ignore that for now. There is definitely still a, a bug in here. So. So what I want to do actually is I want to create, um, I'm going to wrap this up, um, but my idea was to actually commit this code and create a couple of issues, uh, GitHub issues uh, with some, some tags. And so if you're interested in, in helping out with this, um, you can go to the repository. Um, I think I already created one, although it's, uh, I didn't push anything yet, but it will be on the Rustic Games um, yeah, so it will be on the Rustic Games organization. Um, I'll link it in the YouTube description as well. And so you can go here and I, uh, before I'll publish this video, I will, I will have posted this code uh, and I will have created some, some GitHub issues. Um, and so there are a couple of, like, there are a couple of things that we can do. We can clean this up. We can add a couple of more tests. Uh, we can generalize this maybe in some way. There are also some ideas, some other ideas that I still have. Um, so um uh, for example uh like right now we we show it shows all of the page all of the um the posts and one idea that i had is well maybe there should be a, a main page which links to uh, uh depending on the context to a separate context so you could click on the context gui the context debugging and so that would create a nice collection of of all the resources that i gathered and that you can can read on your own and then we could add a search, uh, a JavaScript only search bar, because remember, we want to keep this uh, as a static page. Um, obviously the design can, can, could use some work, although I will probably not commit. Well, I guess I probably won't commit the, the template, maybe as an, in an example directory or something. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Um, um, and the date as well, we should probably look into uh, making it a bit prettier. Uh, so it should probably say the 22nd, uh, of March 2019 or something like that. Um, so yeah, so there are lots of ideas still. Um, maybe I'll, I'll continue this series um, if there is any interest, but for now I think I will uh, f shift my focus to some other videos that, I, that I'm that i interested in doing. Um, um, I have a couple of, it, of ideas. Obviously I already mentioned in the video before that I'm going to work on the game loop um which is why we were creating this 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 utility to get the resources um i'm also interested in doing some uh, a new series uh, behind the scenes where i just talk about some stuff that i that know that i noticed while recording or oh, this is this is my f fourth recording i think um yes so i'm still new to this and i'm learning um and i think it would be nice to have a, a separate series on things that i learn while recording but also maybe uh, the editor setup that I use, although it's it's definitely not perfect, um, and uh, whatever else comes up. Um, but that's for later. We're going to wrap this up now. Um, I, I'll commit everything off screen and I'll push everything up. You can check it out on GitHub. All of the links will be in the description on my YouTube channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This was uh, much longer than I had hoped, <clears throat> but that's fine. Uh, as I've mentioned before in, uh, in other videos as well, I'm still learning a lot about Rust. I'm still figuring out how things work. The iterator stuff is still something that I'm sometimes struggling with to get the right uh, types. Um, it's all part of the game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.